So here we have a ketone molecule, and on the right, just a rough sketch of the HNMR spectrum that corresponds to it. Now, which signal corresponds to which protons in this molecule? Now notice that we have two different signals in this spectrum. So there's two different types of protons. These three methyl groups, they're identical to each other. So those nine protons, they show up as one signal. So let's call it signal A. The three protons in this methyl group shows up as another signal, which we'll call signal B. Now, use an integration, which signal corresponds to which set of protons? Now, you need to be familiar with the concept of integration. We're given the integral trace, which tells us the area under the curve. And the area under the curve is proportional to the height of the signal that we see. And that is proportional to the number of hydrogen atoms that creates that signal. So signal A has nine protons. Signal B has three protons. And so evidently, signal B, I mean signal A has to be at one ppm. So this is the 9H signal. Signal B has to be around 2.3 ppm. So this is the 3H signal corresponding to signal B because there's less protons. So whenever you have a signal that corresponds to more protons, that signal is going to appear taller. The one with less protons will always appear shorter. Now, the ratio of the integral trace of the two signals is proportional to the ratio of the protons that make up those two signals. So if we divide 3.6 by 1.2, that will give us 3. And if we divide 9h by 3h, that will also give us 3. So what we need to keep in mind is this. The tallest signal is going to correspond to the, the most number of protons. And the shortest signal will correspond to the least number of protons. And that's basically it for uh, the integration of HMR signals. Now let's consider another example. So let's say we have another ketone molecule that looks like this. It has a lot of methyl groups. And let's draw the corresponding HNMR spectrum. So let's say we have a signal at 1, a signal, let's say, around 2.2, and another one around 2.3. So go ahead and identify the protons that correspond to each signal using integration. So first, let's identify the different sets of protons that we have. These three methyl groups are identical to each other. So therefore, they will correspond to signal A. These two methyl groups attached to the same carbon, they are identical to each other. So they will correspond to signal B. Keep in mind, there's free rotation around the single bond. Now, the reason why I mentioned that is because this methyl group appears to be in a different chemical environment than this one because it's closer to the ketone functional group. But this methyl group could switch positions with this one, and so it could be nearest the ketone functional group. And because of the free rotation, it turns, about, it, it turns out that they are the same in terms of their relative location to that ketone. Now, if there wasn't any free rotation, this would be a different story. So that's why we could say that the two methyl groups here are chemically identical. Now, this methyl group is different from the rest. So that's going to be the third signal. So use an integration, which one will correspond to this signal? It's going to be the one with the most or the greatest number of protons. So that has to be signal A. 
which carries nine protons. So that's going to be the tallest peak. Signal B has six protons, and so that's going to be the second highest peak. And signal C has three protons, and so that's going to be the shortest peak. And so that's how you can use integration to basically connect a proton with the corresponding signal.